Man United's takeover. Uh, I've seen a lot of rivals laughing today, especially Liverpool fans, Tom, because the bids didn't come in. But Tom Radcliffe's bid in the last 15 minutes has now arrived. It's a world record uh, bid of uh, about 5.5 billion for Manchester United. And um, I've got a theory. Do you want to hear it? I think my brother, Sheikh Hasim, I believe. Oh, he's got like an inside man all of a sudden. You know, I think, I, I honestly do. I think he's got an inside man <laughs> at Rain Group and he's waiting for the last bid to go in, however big it is. He's going to top it and go boom. Because that's what he said the whole time. His media briefs have been so consistent every single time. We're going to blow everybody else out the water. But what he doesn't want to do is bid 7 billion when the next highest is 5 billion. He's waiting to see what people come in with. So it's, it's predicted tonight that the Sheikh's bid will come in. Uh, there's been about five other bids as well today, including some Finnish, uh, Finnish um, tech uh, dude. Um, but yeah, listen, Man United's, Man United's takeover moving on forward. Rivals, question for you. Anyone worried about it? Or if it's done in the right way, it? yeah. Or do people if think it's... it's gonna be no different to the Glazers? If it's done in the right way, yes, there's a might there's a major worry, which is why when you look at what Jim Ratcliffe's saying he will do compared to what the Sheikhs are saying they will do, I think that the born and bred Manchester United fan who gets to the club and have it work should get the should get the one in Sir Jim Ratcliffe. But now the the thing is that the the sheikhs who were coming in and are saying all these big things, the the other people in the Premier League who've come in and said that with this amount of financial backing have delivered, and the biggest worry is if United get this level of funding, get a renovated stadium, get a renovated training ground, the expenditure on the playing squad continues, but the infrastructure of the club grows. That's the worry because they are, United already have a head start on every other club. They already do because they bring in more commercial revenue. So they already have wider profit margins. They already have more room in FFP, etc., etc. They are the biggest club. If the biggest club gets the most money, it's going to be really hard to compete if it's done in the right way. That's the issue. If it's Sir Jim Ratcliffe and the, you know, or, or the other ones where like the Glazers are still involved a little bit, there's always the potential that they stick their nose in and you know it's not a happy marriage and everything. But if the Shakes one goes through, I am a, I am quite worried. Yeah. Especially when, just speaking from my, from me, my owners won't do anything. My owners will sign me Mason Mount and tell me to be happy with it. <laughs> but you know what's crazy about you? Like, I saw Red Men TV ranting about the, the Bellingham thing. I thought, my God, they've finally arrived at the party, Red Men TV, a few years too late. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, I know rival, not all rivals. I'm not saying any of you f- uh, five are, but the amount of rivals I see, and I even see it in here, like they're talking about, uh, your Terry's cap in the Glazers are going to keep the club. There was even one rumor today I saw, and it was the Glazers. It was by journalists. So there's there's sources that say that the main bidders are worried that the Glazers are just using them to to rise uh, the value of the club on the stock market so they can sell more shares. It's like, bro, that is literally illegal. I mean, it, it's beyond. I hope they're doing that because then they'll go to prison, and then we won't have them as owners anymore either. But, like, there's some mad conspiracy theories. Like, Man United's takeover has really warped people's minds. But at the same time, they tell us the Glazers are really good, so I'm confused by that. Why do you think it is, Mo? Takeover thing. Why did us talk about Jim Ratcliffe versus the Qataris and all this stuff? I'm, uh, if you unmuted my mic. Yes, yeah, yeah. I muted because uh, I was getting some... some yeah, yeah, uh, me too. Somebody, somebody's was... mic was feedback in a minute ago and I just muted everyone. So uh, that we uh, can, can you say the question again? You just like, the, my mic was muted and I was looking uh, at okay, it. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was just saying like, why do you think so many rivals are kind of salty towards United getting new owners? <laughs> because they've seen Man City. Uh, listen, Man City before 2008, uh, they weren't even in the talk. I look at Man City, now one of the biggest clubs in the world and everybody's just afraid because... Imagine Man United with the Glazers, that the, 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 the huge pull they have for these superstars. And now imagine they have the money to put in infrastructures to invest in the community and have the club even bigger. Man United, I think it's the biggest football club in the world, along with Barcelona in terms of the fan base. So imagine having owners that can put unlimited funds in this club. This will be... I think a big change in English football because now we're going to have the Saudis and the Newcastle, the Qataris and the Emiratis for, for Man City. That would change everything. People should be scared. Any Everybody in the world should be scared from Man United if they get the Qataris investment. This is so much money on the table along with the Man United name. 
who I think anybody would be stupid not to be scared. And you need to be able to compete. And we have seen the football nowadays. It's about how much money you can spend and who you can bring to the club. And the project will be massive if money not to get the Qataris. I just can't. I can't imagine how much money these guys will spend to improve the club in general and also improve the squad and have every single wish for the manager, Eric Ten Hag, available. I think they will match any bid. They will do everything along with the Man United name. I think everybody should be scared. I'm scared. I support the team in Italy. And I'm like, these people take over the well, freaking world. <laughs> I, tweet, I tweeted what I said earlier, like a stupid fan theory. I said, Qatar and, and, and the Sheikh have an inside man feeding them the bid total so they can make sure their offer for United is, is the highest. With a wink emoji. Clearly sarcasm, right? You thought five all got brains, you get it. The amount of people, that's nonsense. I can't believe you'd write that. That's ridiculous. Oh. No way. That's true. That just shows out they're so angry that they're not even reading correctly and they're panicking. And Listen, I don't think City City fans are not worried to, per se because they've got those owners. I don't Thanks think Newcastle using that are. word Terry, by the way. Oh yeah, but yeah, I know everyone hates me using the word scared, but it's the it's the right word to use. That there are people that are worried is people. better. Worried is better. So That's Terry, more... you don't think they are worried that Man United will come back no, to the picture? Different. Worried and scared. Scared is a just little bit worried that okay, now the Qatari owners now they can match our Emirati guys, yeah. and I, it I, will I, be. I would say this. I mean, that's going to answer it as well, but I don't think. I think there'll be an element of, oh, United could get back to the peak of their powers. But when your team's run well, invested well, got a brilliant manager, you're not so much scared. Like when Fergie was at Man United and we were, I didn't care what Chelsea did, what City did, because I knew Fergie would keep our heads above water. So I was I was kind of like, oh, they're going to really push us. And they made me nervous. But I wasn't worried about them. Post Fergie, I'm scared of all your goddamn teams of the way. You all run better than we are. You all run better than we are. Do you know what I mean? So it worries me because if you're not a well-run club, you cannot succeed and, and on, on a long-term basis. Look at Arsenal. As soon as they fix the boardroom, Arteta's done a brilliant job. But without the board being fixed first, they wouldn't be where they are now. Liverpool, as soon as they started running themselves as a proper football club again, they started to win. Chelsea, you know we'll, see. we'll see with Todd Bowley. We'll see. But Do you know what it is, Terry, for me, right? It's, and this is no one from Tottenham here today, right? This is the issue with Tottenham, right? For a football club to be successful, you need a board and a manager, most important, that share an objective, share a goal, and want to push it out to the rest of the, the rest of the club, right? Tottenham, they've got a board that are obsessed with money and a manager who are obsessed with money. Together, that's never going to be successful, right? So with City, you've got the board, you've got Pep. They both know where we want to go. They share the same ambition, share the same goals, so it works. Now at Arsenal, Arteta has gone in there and he's got the board sharing the same goals as them. This is why I actually think Arsenal will, because Arsenal don't need to pay for no stadium no more. Arsenal are one of the biggest clubs. They will spend money, right? So, and I think the board listened to Arteta. They know Arteta knows how they should operate. So I think that's going to work. Now, the key with, with Man United is, I think with Ten Hag, they've got the right manager. It's the, the board go in and the board listen to the manager because the board have enough money, let's be clear. But most boards do. But if the board go in and say to Ten Hag, you're the man for the job and we're willing to listen to you, we're going to have a sports director that's going to work with you, all of that good stuff, that is worrying. Just from a, from a rival fan's scaring me, the only way I could ever be scared of a football fan is if my club was about to go into administration. That's scary. Well, that might happen when you're found guilty of cheating. <laughs> Never going to happen. We all know that, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Walked into that one, isn't it? <laughs> I, did, I did. I was ready for you it. Never know. You never know when you're playing Leighton Orient in two seasons' time, mate. Well, <laughs> it will probably save me some money, so. <laughs> I mean, and we have we have seen how good Arabs run clubs. Like, I'm not only looking at Man City. I'm looking at Newcastle. And look at the jump and how the club is worth run now, the investments that they did. I think this is... I think if Man United with Ten Hag, as Dap said, and the Arabs in, in there, they know what they're doing. They hire the right yeah. people to yeah. manage clubs. It's, it's scary. Just, I just give a chat here from the Bill. says, Qatar is the only way to go. My issue with Sir Jim Ratcliffe is the news that came out that we might have what I refer to as a double dip debt, where they might not clear our current debt and they are buying us. Oh, right. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. So the worry, the worry for me is more this. if Because they, they may say initially, look, I've seen company mergers that do this many times in my, in my banking career where they promise one thing at the start when they're buying or they're merging 
And then once the old guard have gone, they do what the hell they want. The problem is with Sir Jim Ratcliffe is that they could end up one day saying, actually, we're changing our minds now. Man United are going to pay for both debts. And then we're in trouble. Yeah. Then, we're, then, we're, then we're in genuine trouble. And I, unless there is something that's written in stone and blood that would never make United um, accountable for those debts, I don't, I, don't, I don't want them. But he says here, I was listening to Football Wars um, and they said they weren't worried because the Glazers spend money too. And that's just that there. If you're a football fan, that's like the Glazers spent money. Therefore, United having even more money is, is not, not something to worry about. Just shows your ignorance on the matter. Considering Do you though, know what? The other thing one, is... One sec. Just considering that Hussam had a guitar flag in his, <laughs> in his bio for three months because he thought they were buying Liverpool... It's hilarious that he's saying he's not worried. <laughs> I hope he's taken my, my nation's flag out of his bio by now. I hope he has. Terry, I am guitar I'm, bias. I'm no longer English as well. I'm switching nationalities. I'm doing the whole lot. But Better Terry, here's the difference. Players. Here's the difference between why Liverpool want new owners and why Man United want new owners. Liverpool's, oh, Liverpool's fan base want new owners to go in and spend money. Manchester United want, a new, want new owners to go in there and improve the infrastructure of the, the uh, training facilities, improve the infrastructure of the ground, improve all around the ground, improve the community, do exactly what Manchester... Because they've seen what City's owners have done for the west side of Manchester, right? Mm -hmm. And do you know what? That's what Man United fans want for their club. United fans know that their owners will spend money. They already do. But they want more for their football club. Whereas Liverpool fans... Sorry, Tom, correct me if I'm wrong. You just want investment. I just want us to start spending money and, you know, stop acting like we're a top four hopeful team and we have the best in the world in all this class and then we settle for me. Unlucky. Mount. Are you right, Tom? You seem a bit no, nothing wrong with Mason Mount, to be fair. Nothing wrong with Mason Mount. Yeah, Mason Mount's on his way. Ma Ma Mason Mount. Mason Mount couldn't usurp Jordan Henderson in the World Cup. And and apparently he's our he's our answer to all our problems. He needs to go to Liverpool and learn from the, from the best. Merseyside Mount, Merseyside Minerals, go for it. He could do it. Merseyside. You're also performing well. Merseyside Minerals Mount, it's great. It does, it works. Mersey Mount, Mersey Mount. Mersey Mount, there you go. Mersey Mount. Works. Uh, Aaron here says, why do some United fans want Qataris? Anything you will win will be deemed irrelevant, as you United fans have done yourself with City. Do you know what I would say to you, Aaron? Certain United fans, and some of them are big YouTubers, are going to look very, very silly. It's why I've never con the only thing I've ever said about City is if they've cheated, they should be punished. You've you cannot find a video where I've condemned them, them spending their money, I've condemned their owner, their owners investing money, and I've never referred to them or their managers as checkbook managers. Why? Because you never know who's going to own your club in the future, and you need to be very careful about the, the footprint you leave on the internet, about who you condemn and who you don't. Because all the Man United fans that did it about Newcastle, Chelsea, City are now going to look like idiots. And I'd just Same rather... Liverpool fans. Li oh, Liverpool fans. Liverpool fans who claim to be like s complete socialist left wings. Yeah, give us that old money now. Give it, give it. Now, honestly, yeah. everyone's like that. That's why I don't, that's why I don't virtue signal because virtue signalers always, always end up looking stupid in the end. Every single one of them throughout history. I'll tell you all privately off the stage about a, a particular fan from a, someone you'll all know. And how virtue signaling goes wrong for you. But I'll do that off camera because I'm not starting beef today. It's hilarious. But there not we today. go. Not today. I'm not, yeah, I'm not doing it on camera. Nabil here says, Aaron, I will be shameless and celebrate trophies. Nabil, listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna oil myself. I'm gonna do a full stream covered in oil. I'm telling you, I'm gonna oil myself up <laughs> in, my pants, in my pants. I'm doing it because uh I just care. I listen, I don't care where the money comes from. Do you know what I mean? Half my city of London is owned by the Middle East and Russia and China. So do you know what I mean? Well, I'm never going to visit London again. Fuck off. But like, I mean, drop me out with that bullshit. Qatari flag and the whole top thing and everything. I, honestly, no, I, won't, I won't do anything with my clothes off like, and disrespect the flag of Qatar. Um, I, obviously, I understand. I, I spent some time out there. It's a lovely place. I really enjoyed it. Uh, why should anyone be scared? We all want uh, more than one team to, to, ch uh, to challenge, uh, to try and win the Premier League. But when I say scared, I just mean everyone's worried about big bad Man United coming back to the four, one hundred and ten percent, in my opinion. But there we go, uh, viewers. But, I mean, just so on. Though, like, yes, it, we want more than two teams to challenge, and we'll get that for a couple of years while United build up speed. And then when it comes down to Manchester City, who are a well-run club, and Manchester United, who could well be a well-run club, outspending every other team to try and one up their their city rivals. That which is a real possibility. 
what do we do then? Because as good as, Arsenal, as good as Arsenal's like young core is, Tom, as you good were as... able to challenge without that much money as well. You're going to we were, challenge yeah. for four we, years. We were, yeah. And, and now look at it because before, we didn't it? sustain it. The, the difference oh, is City, City, and United would sustain it. We 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 sat there on reset. We sat there and spent seven years with the same squad, and now we wonder why we're crap. City <laughs> let go of players before they even before the the start of the decline, and people yeah, question it. I think that was just due down to your recruitment policy as well, not bringing in midfielders. I think if you would oh, have brought we, in some we midfielders, sat, we sat there and acted helped. like COVID money because, in the wrong places. It, it was we acted like COVID was the. We were the only club that got affected by COVID. No other club got affected by COVID. No, we were the only ones. It's on, it's on your fan base as a, as a general, uh, generally, because you lot just accept whatever club PR you put out. You don't push back. You say, yes, sir, no, sir. Free bags full, sir. Can I get on my knees for you, sir? I'll unzip you, sir. I'll put it in my mouth, sir. Whatever they say, you lot did. And I find it hilarious because you've now succumbed. And every time communism runs something, it goes wrong. Do you know what I mean? It's happened to communist oh. Merseyside now. You've all been done. Now you're begging for every... Oh, please, come get us out. You're begging for a capitalist <laughs> to come save you from your communism. That's what happens all the time, Tom. That's what happens all the time. I love it. I love it. I know, you're, I know you've been uh, red-pilled a long time ago, Tom. Uh, but there we go. It's beautiful to see.